Welcome everybody. This is our 70s class and it's 1230 in the afternoon here on a beautiful day in the villages. Today we are working on Take Me Home Country Roads. It is on page 284. It's actually a pretty easy song. So if most of you would just go to your song setup and, and play, you're going to be absolutely wonderful. But I did have some fun and I did make an arrangement. This is not stairway to heaven hard stuff. This is easy stuff. For, so, for those of you who shied away from doing that really hard one, this one's going to be a lot easier to do. Now, what's the purpose of doing an arrangement? Not to sound exactly like Dawn. It's to, s to be able to learn what all the buttons are on your instrument. That's what this is. What does this one do? What does auto bass do? What does golden harp do? Where is it on my instrument and what does it do? That's the purpose of doing an arrangement so that you can find where these things are. And that way when you want to start making your own arrangements, you know what's going on. So I will have, I will put that up on Patreon um, or I don't put it on there, Robert does that. But if you want it sooner than that, you know to email me 5028 at FletcherMusic.com and I'll make sure that I get you a copy of that. All right, so what do we know about Take Me Home Country Roads? It was a song written by Bill Danoff, Taffy Nivert, and John Denver about West Virginia. It was released as a single performed by Denver on April 12, 1971, and it peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 singles. It became one of John Denver's most popular songs. Now, Danif and Nevert originally wanted to sell the song to Johnny Cash. Interesting, huh? But John Denver decided he had to have it. He just had to have it. <laughs> Since at that time, only the verses and the chorus had been written, so then the three of them finished writing the bridge, <laughs> and Nevert got out an encyclopedia to learn more about the state of West Virginia, and she found that the rhododendron was actually the state flower of West Virginia. So that was actually the original title, rhododendron. <laughs> And uh, it didn't stick, obviously, so not to worry. Uh, the people of West Virginia, though, they absolutely loved the song. And the tourism office, um, they, they uh, obtained the rights to use the song in its marketing, in its marketing for tourism. Also, it became the theme song of West Virginia University and has been performed at every home football game since 1972. <laughs> Also, the Mountain State Brewing Company, based in Thomas, or Thomas, West Virginia, produces an amber ale named Almost Heaven, after the first line in this song. So that's how popular the song actually is. Now, I want you to take note of the other two writers, Bill Danoff and Taffy Nevert. Um, they actually wrote most of the song. They were backup singers for John Denver, but they were also members of their own band, and they were members of the Starland Vocal Band. Okay, does anybody know right off the top of your head what the Starland Vocal Band was known for? No. Uh, Skyrockets in Flight. Skyrockets in Flight. No, no. Afternoon Delight. Yeah. You got it. Way to go, Mona. <laughs> yep, the Starland Vocal Band wrote Afternoon Delight. And so Based those up. are the two singers that were backing up Denver. See how small that, that musical circle really yeah. is? It's um, just different. amazing. Everybody knew everybody else. Yep. Okay, also, here's some more trivia. Eric Weisberg, who played banjo and steel guitar on the recording is best known for his banjo solo from Dueling Banjos. Okay, so again, that music world is very small. Everybody knew everybody else, and everybody played on each other's, on each other's albums, and so I thought, I thought that was just really, really cool to get some of that trivia. So now you know the answers when you go on Jeopardy, okay? 
All right. Um, I'm just going to play Country Roads today, and I'm going to play using my arrangement. Now, I did put them into presets, and what I'm actually doing is using my foot switches to change the presets. So to do that, you go to Custom 3. Some of you have it in Custom 2, which is all the way back over here. Okay? I'm a, everything's a little bit off today. Has been the last couple of days. I'm not sure what's going on with the internet, but it's weird watching myself be a second behind everything here. Okay, so you have touch number three, or you can get it by going into your feature clear and go to next preset. And it has foot switches, it has touch bars left and right, and foot switches left and right. You want to touch right foot switch and turn it on. And then you can just kick that foot switch. Now what does that right kick switch normally do? Normally that's your fill-in. Well, I like to use my fill-in right here on the touch bar. So that right kick switch for me is very good for just moving my presets along so I don't have to lift up my fingers. I want you to listen to the arrangement and see if you can figure out what I did. What did I turn on? What did I turn off? And then we'll talk about some of that when I'm done playing. All right. There's also a road map. See if you can figure out the road map. And then we'll talk about that as well. Here we go. Take me home, country roads. great you added some extra notes in there Don right um, I added a few extra notes um, no great shakes but I did I added guitar strums in the bridge okay yeah so you saw me doing 
more than one finger on the top keyboard. That's because I added extra notes to do. I added the guitar strums, yes. I got a question, Dawn. Yeah. Are you playing the foot pedals on your organ when you're playing that? Nope. Wow. My, my oh, foot sure. pedals are off. I don't play oh. foot pedals. Why? Well, my daughter Michelle has no problem singing to that song the way you play it. And the thing is, my stereo is on and it comes through. The bass comes through so loud. It's, it, it, it sounds like you're playing the foot pedals. Oh, OK. No, I'm just using the automatic bass that's here. So awesome. oh, that's that's awesome. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so you can make this as easy as you like. Thank you, by the way, for the compliment. But no, I'm letting the organ do all the work. So when I started out, you guys, you guys heard some good stuff. And I did some subtle changes as well. And when I started, what was probably the number one thing that you heard when I started? What did you hear? How about no bass? How about no bass at all when I started? There's no low end. Yeah. No bass. Okay. Now. Oops. Go on. Yes. With me. Sorry. It's We're okay. waiting for a baby to be born, so I had to keep my phone on. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a little boy, but um, oh. anyway. What, come, what instruments come up on your song setups? I'm getting fillers and mandolin. Yeah. I'm totally changing getting... all that. Yeah. Uh, you can okay. put it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can do... sound the same. Okay. Yes. You can do fiddles and mandolin and just put put it on song setup and play and you're gonna be fine. As okay. a matter of fact, let's go to that and just see what it brings up. Keypad, alphabet, T, take. Let's go to song setup, take me home. Yeah, it comes up to square dance at 98. Totally different. Yeah, it's a little fast in my opinion, but if you want, you, your song setup is in there, go ahead and use it. It really comes up very West Virginian-y like, if, you, if that's a word. <laughs> but what I'm using is just a basic country, or you can also use country swing. And what I base that on is, what does the bass actually do once we finally get to the bass. Once we get to the bass, it's doing this. Boom, 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 boom. That would be your basic country or your country swing. Either one of those would work and you could actually follow most of these instructions on country swing and it's gonna be the same. Because when we're starting, you're gonna turn off your bass. You don't want any bass. You're also going to turn off the Orc Plus because you want to have not a lot of stuff going on. Okay. Then I'm also turning off anything in the lower tabs. No humming. This is one of those rare times that you're letting your lower sound, which is, an, which is a guitar, it's a steel guitar, just letting that in the, in the lower. So you're turning off the strings and the flute. You don't want the humming. Okay. And then what else did I do? Sounded like a country harmony, but then it sounded like the chords were being broken up. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I did go to country harmony, but not to start. Not to start. I actually turned on golden harp and did a guitar pattern. And the G, now the guitar pattern, let me just check this. Normally your guitar pattern sounds like this. And let's turn off some of this other stuff. And I'm using a 12 string guitar, which is sound number 116. There's two ways to find it. You can turn on your genius or your sound next to your golden harp. 
and turn it blue in the window and scroll until you get to guitar 12 string. Or you could try other guitars as well. See how they all sound a little different? Acoustic would have been pretty oh. too. But I went to that 12 string because it almost sounds a little bit like a banjo. A little bit. Um, but then I didn't want it to go fast like that the whole time. So I went to rate. Now you get to rate by going to the page where your patterns are. Some of you have sound and rate at the bottom. This, this particular organ, which is the imperial, says exit and rate. And if you go to rate, you can make it normal. You can make it double time. Pretty crazy. Or you can do one per beat. And that's what I'm using is the one per beat. Now, if you don't have rate, that means you need to upgrade to the next instrument. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> because it really is cool to have that one per beat there in your in, in your golden harp. So now when I take all that stuff out and uh, yeah, that's what I hear. I've got some strumming. That's from the genie or the basic, and I've got that guitar pick going in my golden harp. Okay, so all this does is it helps you to find the buttons on your instrument. That's what that does. And I started with the guitar on the top. And that actually shows up in uh, uh, vintage number zero. It gives you that. And we're going 158 beats a minute. <gasps> I know that's a little different from the 98 that comes up on Song Setup, but when it comes up on Song Setup, you're actually playing it in double time, so you're playing it almost at 200. So 158 to me seems a lot nicer uh, way to play it. But you put it where, you put the tempo where it feels comfortable to you. And everything that I just did is written right here. So all you have to do is go down the line and find where things are. And when you get done, you memorize it. Memorize A. One, with style, I always put with transpose too, and then turn your memorize button off and there it is. Now, who was it, Linda? Linda, you heard country harmony. Country yes. harmony comes in, country harmony does come in on that first page. And it comes in on line three, and I'll go through and tell you where all these, where the changes are. But it actually comes in in the middle of line three for life is old there. And you heard the harmony, go up to the top, which is exactly yeah. what it was supposed to do. So if I play that first line. Right here. Here where that harmony goes up on top. That's because right. that's exactly the way they're doing it in the original recording. That's where the harmony, and there's actually a girl that's singing it up on top. Could so you put duet harmony, in there? Could you put duet in there too? You could, but if you put duet in, it's going to sound like this instead. It's going to sound low. Sounds like this. Higher. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So you can use the duet, but it's going to make it sound like there's a guy singing lower. And if you yeah. put country on, it's going to sound like the girl is singing higher, which is actually the way the original recording is. Okay, so that's where, so you did hear country harmony. Yes, good one, Linda. Good one. Thank you. And then I added the bass. 
added the bass when it came time to do the chorus, which starts on the last measure of the top line of page 285. Country roads take me home. That's where the chorus starts and that's where the bass started. <laughs> added some strings and some flute sounds to the bottom and to the top to make it a little bit thicker. So that's all going to be in here too. Easy stuff, easy stuff. Your harmony then goes on and off. And I also used altar style. Now I used altar style for the bridge. When we get to the bridge, which starts on page 286, the second ending, second line, second ending. I hear the voice in the morning. That's the part of the song that doesn't it's match any other part of the song. Pardon? The vehicle is smoking a little bit. Oh, okay. Am I okay? Yeah, you're fine. That was me. I'm sorry. I didn't know I oh. unmuted myself. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. If we're if we're on um the top line of page 286, the second time you play it. Now I'm going to go to the bridge, which is the second ending. You hear the difference in the background. I went from this to this. The drummer's different. So for the bridge, I'm actually using, instead of um, the harmony, I'm actually doing guitar strums. And I'm not doing three note chords, I'm just pretty much doing two note chords. And in order to do a guitar strum, all you do is you're going to stack some notes, and you're going to play them from the bottom up. And when you play them from the bottom up, you're going to hold the first one. If you play a three note, a three note guitar strum, it's still going to be from the bottom up. You're just going to roll it, but you're going to hold each one. It's always from the bottom up. You just roll your notes from the bottom up, and I'll give you all those notes in a minute. So that you is have so cool. them. Now, if you don't want to play those, guess what you can do? Duet. You can just put on duet and play just that one note. But it doesn't sound quite as cool. <laughs> John, do you, do you say you add the altar at the bridge? At the bridge, correct. That's it. Then you put on the altar. Okay. Yep. Yep. And don't worry because that'll all be here too. Okay. Yeah. And it gives you a little bit of a challenge. Why? because you guys can handle it. Now remember, everything I tell you in this class is optional. You don't need to do any of it. You can just put it on, on your song setup and play, and you'll be absolutely fine. All right, now there are some mistakes in here. Um, let's see. Let's do the roadmap first. We'll do the roadmap first, then I'll fix the mistakes. And then we'll talk about where the changes are. All right, so you're going to get out your colors because that's the best way to make roadmap. Follow the lyrics. It will always take you where you need to go. First page, almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, blah, 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 blah all first page. All of the second page. The third page, page 286, you have a first ending in the, in the second line. See it? With the bracket. Yep. And then you have two dots and a thin line and a thick line. Make that a color, and that's going to take you back to 
the dots exactly. at the beginning. You never put repeat dots in the middle of a measure. They always go on a measure. So your pickup notes are actually going to be in that first ending. All my memories. Okay, now we're going to do verse two. Gather round her, miner's lady, stranger to blue water. All of page 285. And we're going to turn the page. We need a different color. Okay, so now we're going to play line one. The first measure of line two. And then right before the one, I'm going to put a colorful two. Skip over the first ending and go to the second ending. Pretty easy to follow. That's where the bridge starts. I hear her voice in the morning hour she calls. All right, now I'm going to get a different color because the bridge goes to page 287 to the end of the second line. The end of the second line, you have two thin lines and some instructions. And it says D.S. Alcoda. Go back to the silly sign. Where's the silly sign? Page 286. Nope, 285. 285. Second line. Second. Second line where the chorus starts. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So you want to make that the same color as you made your two thin lines over here. So that, that way your eyes will follow the colors. You're playing the chorus again. Country roads take me home. Now what are you looking for? Looking for the two coda sign. Okay. which is the top of page 286. That's where it is, Joanne. The, the top of page 286 says two coda. Okay. Remember, you never go backwards to a coda. Codas only send you forwards. It's, and coda means tail, so it's the final ending. So when you do the coda, you're just going to jump, and you can put an arrow if you want, down to the coda. Yeah, you can just make a little arrow, and that way you know. You finish the song, but we're not done yet. Oh, because I added some more stuff. Why? Because I can. <laughs> You're like we are that. going to do a repeat and fade of the coda. Oh. So the very last line of the song, you're going to cross out that last half measure. Okay, the half measure where you just have the, the whited in half note, cross that yeah. whole thing out. You're not going to use it. Got so it. then the line right before that, you're going to put two dots, a thin line, and a thick line. And you're going to make that a color. Okay, now there's a tie. Where is that tie going? Back up three lines where the coda actually starts. The second measure, where you have that blacked-in quarter note, you're mm -hmm. going to put a thick line, a thin line, and two dots. And that's where it's going back to. Make that the same color. So your tie is actually going from the whole note to a quarter note. And then you're just going to repeat and fade everything that's in between there. Okay. Okay? Got it. Any questions on the roadmap? Not too bad. Not too as long bad. as you don't change any chords, we're fine. Um, I'm only changing one, and it's only because it was a misprint. Oh, okay. Well, you got lucky. Yes, I did. <laughs> First of all, let's go to page one or page 284. There is a misprint in the right-hand notes. Did anybody catch that? Yes. Yes, for the word river. You're playing a G chord, and they're play showing A notes. Really? <laughs> Shenandoah River, it's, a, it, it's written like this. Um, <laughs> really? Seriously? No. That's not how it goes. So cross out those two A's in line three and change them change. to G's. G is on the second line. <laughs> So change those A's to G's. That was a misprint. It's terrible. Yeah. 
Damn it. Played it. I was like, what? Uh huh. I know. It's easy I mean, play. If, they if make you mistakes. Know that and her music, you knew that was wrong. <laughs> okay, now let's go to page 286, where the bridge is. Line four. Radio reminds me. Cross out that very first D chord for the left hand and make it a C. C for chicken. It's written like this. No, that's wrong. Yeah, and it's supposed yeah. to be on a supposed to be on number seven. It's not a D, it's a C chord. So they made another mistake. So change that first D chord to a C chord, and that's the only one. The D chord here on the end of line four is absolutely fine the way it's supposed to be. So those were the two mistakes. Got it? Yep, got it. All right, now let's fill in the notes. As long as we're here in the bridge, let's fill in the notes for stacking our chords to do the guitar rolls. Line two, second measure, I mean, sorry, second ending. Second ending, I hear her. Under the G, put an E elephant on the first line. Stack them up. You only want to do it on that first one. And you're going to hold that one. And you'll remember, you're rolling from the bottom up. All right, let's go to line three. Under the F sharp for voice, put a D dinosaur on the first space under the staff. So F sharp, D. And just leave it there for the measure. Second measure, under the B for morning, put a G, gorilla, on the second line. Stack them up, B, G. Do the same thing in the next measure. Under the B for calls, put a G, gorilla. Now you're going to have to let go of it when you do me. But that's okay. Let's go to the next line where we just changed the chord to a C chord. Under the C, you're going to put two notes. G on the second line and E elephant on the first line. So you're stacked up C, G, E, and you're going to roll them from the bottom up. Next measure. The chord is G. The note is a C. Under the C, you're going to put G gorilla on the second space and D dinosaur on the first space under the staff. C, G, D. And when you roll them from the bottom up, it'll, it'll match the G chord. Next measure, home. Under the A, we're going to put one note, and it's an F sharp. F sharp under the A, and it's the first space. Same thing when you get to the fifth line. Under the A for the word way, put an F sharp. Second measure, drive in. Under the first B, you're going to put two notes, a G on the second line and an E on the first line. B, G, E. Last measure on that page. Under the first A for road, you're going to put two notes. An F on the first space and a C on the first line under the staff. A, F, C. Page 
Page 287, top line. First measure under the G, you're going to put an E on the first line and a C on the first line under the staff. G, E, C. And roll them from the bottom up and then hold the, the C and the E. Second measure on the top line. Under the G for should, you're going to put a D dinosaur on the first space under the staff, and underneath that you're going to put a B butterfly on the second space under the staff. G, D, B. <laughs> top line last measure. Under the A, you're going to put three, two notes. It's going to be a three-note stack. Under the A, you're going to put an F sharp on the first space. And under the F sharp, you're going to put a D on the first space under the staff. A, F sharp, D. Second line, first measure, third beat. Under the A for yesterday, put an F sharp. Just, just one extra note. Second measure under the C, you're going to put an A on the second space and an F sharp on the first space. C, A, F sharp. You just roll it from the bottom to the top. Don't you play did it. Say you, you did say you're going down all the time, right? No, you're going up. Okay, so it's always from the D. bottom to the top. Okay. Well, F sharp. Start on the D. low note and roll your fingers uphill. Okay. Because on the guitar, when you strum, you're always strumming from the low string is the high string, and the high the the thin string, which plays the higher notes, are on that's on the bottom. So you're starting on the low notes going to the top. Don't want to play them together. Don't do that because then you might as well just put your harmony on and play. But you're going to roll it like you're strumming a guitar from the low string to the high string. Don't play them separately. Don't play. Roll them and hold them. Okay, that's it for, for the guitar strums. Any questions? Pretty fun to do, actually. But again, if you don't feel like doing it, just put on your duet and play. <laughs> okay. The only now we have to talk about where the presets go. Okay. So at the beginning of the song, you're going to put two presets: A1 and A4. A1, comma A4 because you do have to come back to repeat. Let's go to the third line. John, question. Yes. You yes. said A, A1 and A4, that's starting at the G, not at, the first one is a no chord. Well, yeah, it's a no chord, but you could actually just start with a G chord and just let it go. Or you could just start with a no chord, but you still have to have A1 on. Okay. Because you got to have a little bit of drum so you know how fast you're going. Okay, but you, you, don't, you don't hit the one until you do the no, no chord. Correct, yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. But it's A1 and A4 at the top of that first page. Then on line three, third measure where that rest is, you see that, that uh, rectangle sitting on top of the middle line? Yeah. You're going to have two, two, <laughs> two. <laughs> Presets. <laughs> Presets, yes. A2 and A5. A2 and A5 at that rest. All right, now let's go to the top of page 280. Go second ahead. Line or third? Is that the second line or third line? Third line. Third line, third, third measure. Line. Life is old mm -hmm. there. Keep up, David. <laughs> <laughs> <Come on. laughs> 
All right, top of page 285, at the end of the line where you see the word country, that's where the chorus starts. So right there, you're going to have two presets, A3 and A6. If you don't want to put it there, you can put it where the silly sign is, the beginning of line two, just so that when you get to roads, you're on those new presets. If you want to start it for country, go ahead. So A3 and A6. You're going into the chorus. All right, let's turn the page. Second line, first ending. You're going to put A4. A4. Now, we've already got A4 written over here, but guess yeah. what? Yeah. Guess what? Your pickup what? notes are actually here in the first ending, so put A4 there also. Okay. Okay, so you know you're going to kick your foot switch and go to A4 before you do all my. Second ending in the rest, when you, after you play that E minor chord or right before you play the E minor chord, you're going to go to A7. A7, that's for the bridge. And you're going to play all the rest of the page, page 287, the top two lines. Now, the last measure of line two, you have a quarter rest. Mm -hmm. On that quarter rest, you're going to put A8, because that's going to send you back to the chorus. A8, country roads. So that's A8. Now we're at the coda. After the word roads, that second measure, you have a quarter rest. We're in line three. That's where you want to put A9. A9. And finish the song. And all we're doing for A9 is going back and cutting and pasting A3. So we're going from something super, super full. Back to something a little simpler. So we're just cutting and pasting. And it says right here, it'll say A9 equals press A3. And all you do is press A3 and then memorize it to A9. Pretty easy. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's pretty much it. Any questions? <laughs> John? Actually, yeah. I, I've been wanting to look for a book or getting some uh, worksheet or something and doing right and double notes. Mm -hmm. Well, we got it today. <laughs> we I, do got that, it today. I do that every now and then. Now, what? where am I getting okay. the notes from? Am I just pulling them out of my head? In the chord, no? They're in the chord, exactly. Yeah. Those are the notes that are in the chord. The chord is what dominates and tells you everything. It tells your golden harp what to do. It tells your harmony what to do. If you're going to fill in your own harmony, you got to follow what the chords are doing. Yep. yep. Very cool. Don. Yeah. Hi. Uh, what is the tempo? Tempo is, I have it at 158, but your song setup is going to bring it up to much faster. It's actually bringing it up to 98, but you're going to play it in double time. So you put your tempo where it feels good for you. Okay. Thanks. Always adjust it to where it works for you. Okay. I just give you something to get started. The song setup just gives you something to get started with. You don't have to like any of them. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I do well, also Donna, have fingering. When you're counting at, when it's at 158 and you're counting, Mm -hmm. uh, how do you count that? I mean, you feel it. It's yeah. actually here. Here we'll put it on. We'll put it on. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to go to page 285 where the silly sign is, and I'm going to just count it the way it plays. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. One. Two, Okay. 
I'm just counting one, two, three, four, exactly the way it is. Don't count. Let this right. guy do the counting for yeah. you. It gives you an idea, though. You know. <laughs> gives you, I mean, In other words, you're your saying that is to, Your job is to feel yep. the music. Let this guy do the counting for you, and you just play it like you're singing along with the radio. So okay? Cool. Yeah. Yep. All right. Next week, we will actually do the next song which is tie a yellow ribbon okay we have done that before but um we'll, well yeah, we can do it again why not why not we'll see what we can do with it i'm in a battle Oops. we'll see what we can do with it along with finding your songs for rain i'm still looking <laughs> i'm still working on them i can give you some Oh, I'm sure you can. <laughs> I, I got 10 of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a lot. Okay. I don't want to know. I don't want to know what they are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just play them, okay? Okay. Okay. I'm going to do ESP right now. Okay. All right. What, what it's on Joanne's here you list. Go, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For those of you who don't need fingering, thank you so much for coming. I can't do it without you. Enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and we will see you again next time. Um, oh, I just got an email. Robert's doing a concert tomorrow at 4 o'clock on Zoom, um, 4 o'clock Florida time. So um, I have no idea what he's doing, but um, he's always entertaining. So we'll watch Robert tomorrow at 4. The rest of you who need fingering, stick around. We got more work to do. Okay, Get your thank pencils you, Don. out. Thank you, Don. These are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. D1, D1. E2, D1. E2, D1. E2, G3. Now, watch that. You are skipping a note there. Next line, A4, A4. B5, A4, E2, 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 D1. Next line, E2, the Gs that we wrote in are threes. If you want to make them fours, that's okay. Let's go to life is old there. D1, D1, E2, D1. Next line, E2, G3, G3. B5, B5, A4, 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 top of the second page, B5, A4, E2, G3, G3, A4, G3, check mark. That's the one place you're going to breathe with your hand and just pick it up and put it in a new position so we can start the chorus. G1, A2. Second line, B3, B3, A2, G1, A2, B3, A2. Third line, G1, B2, D4, E5, 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 D4, B2. At the end of that held B, put a check mark. B3, A2, G1, A2, B3. Turn the page. B3, A2, G1, G1. G1, A2, G1. Next line. In the rests, you got lots of them there. Just put a check mark because you're going to start a new section. Your pickup notes in the first ending are D1, D1. Second ending. E3, I'm sorry, it's a G. G3, G3, G3. If you want to put a 1 on the E, go ahead and then just roll them. Usually when you do stacked notes, it's whatever finger gets there first. I will give you some suggestions today, but if you don't like them, that's okay. Next line, F sharp is a two. The D underneath it, you can make it a one. 
G3, A4. B5, 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 B5. And the G underneath it can be a 3. Next measure, B5, A4, G3, G3. And the G underneath the first B can be a 3. Let's go to the next line. C5, 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 C5. John, I'm sorry. John, that, yeah. la that last measure there, that uh, in the huh? third line. Could you repeat that last measure there in the third line? Yes, third line, last measure. The B is a 5, A4, G3, G3. And the G underneath the first B, you may make that a 3 as well. Next line where we change the chord, the C's are all fives. If you want to put the G and the E in underneath, it would be a two on the G, a one on the E. One, two, five. The notes in the next measure reminds me of my C5, B4, A3, G2. Let's go back to the first one, reminds under the C, you can put a G and a D, two and a one. One, two, five. Fourth line, next measure. The A is a three, B four, B four. The F sharp, you can make it a one. I know it's against the rules, but you can make it a one. Last line on that page, A is three, the F sharp can be a one. Then you put a check mark. The A for the word and is a four. Oh. The Bs are all fives. Now, for driving, you've got a G and an E underneath. Your, your numbers are G3, E1. And then it would be one, three, five up. <laughs> all right, the last measure on that line, all the A's are fours. You want to make them fives, that works too, I don't care. And then your notes underneath would be an F and a C, F2, C1. <laughs> Top of the second page, all the Gs are threes for the first measure. And then the E and the C underneath it are two and one. Here's where I'm going to switch fingers. All these Gs can now be fours. Should have been home. Make them all fours. And then the D and the B underneath is a two and a one. If you can do it with the three, go ahead. I just can't reach it. <laughs> and then the A, the last measure on line one is A4, B5, A4. Your F sharp and D can be F sharp two, D1. Now you want to put a little check mark after that held A, make the A a 3, the B a 4, and the C a 5 in the next measure. The F sharp underneath can be a 1. And then when you go to the word day, you've got an A and an F. The A is a 3, the F sharp is a 1. The pickup notes, G1, A2. Okay, now, when you have stacked notes, like I said, whatever finger gets there first is the winner. F normal fingering pretty much goes all out the window when you do those guitar strums. You just play them as smoothly as you can. Let's go to the coda, G1. B3, A2, G1, A2. Next line, B3, A2, G1, G1. B3, A2, G1. Last line, A2. B3, A2, G1, G1. That's it. It's actually a pretty simple song, but I think adding the chords, the guitar strums, gave it a little bit of oomph. Just gave it's it a little, little, little bit of a, something to work on. But again, you don't have to do those. You can put it on duet and just play and yeah. it's going to be fine well, it's fun to try yeah it is fun to try it's fun stuff any questions 
No, it's great. Enjoy playing John Denver. He's wonderful Thank to play. <laughs> Thank you. Guys you guys are so awesome. If you need Thank anything, you. email me, 5028 at Fletcher Music. Okay. Thanks, John. You are welcome. Thank you. Coming in muddy. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Don. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I'm just reading the chats. You guys always write some nice things. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.